Hi YouTube, I just wanted to put together a quick video. I want to discuss how you benefit from being a silver enthusiast. How you benefit from uh, being in the game. Uh, before we get started though, have you checked out Mr. Silver Bullet Sniper's unboxings? I'm going to put a link to his channel in the, in the description box. I'm, I'm telling you guys, we, my son and I have an absolute blast watching his videos. They, they just crack me up every time. His, his uh, shtick is, picture Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Really good movie, guys. Although the end kind of lagged. But uh, Patrick Bateman and uh, Hannibal Lecter, not Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, but from the second Silence of the Lambs movie where he's kind of running amok and uh, ate part of Ray Liotta's brain. Anyway, uh, picture them having a love child. And that, that's what you're getting here from uh, Mr. Silver Bullet Sniper. Just really fun. Um, check them out when you get a second. I know a lot of you have. I've seen your comments over there. But uh, I'm telling you, as far as the fun side of YouTube, he nails it. So, um, as far as how you benefit from being a silver enthusiast, so let me let me let me just start out with drawing this uh, parallel here. From the golden age of uh, two thousand three to about, I guess two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine for the Red Sox, they were a really hard ticket in, in Boston. Trying to get a Red Sox ticket was tough. Trying to get a good Red Sox ticket was really difficult. Um, you either had to know somebody or you had to be a little lucky or you kind of had to be in the know. And it was funny because every year I was able to basically get tickets to some fantastic games and everything would be paid for. So every year when I went to the Red Sox, it was basically for free. I'd go to a Saturday Yankee game in the summer against the Red Sox, really difficult ticket, expensive, and it'd basically be paid for for me. So how did I do this? Was I friends with Theo Epstein? Was I David Ortiz's favorite nephew? No. I was basically in the game. By being a Red Sox enthusiast and being aware of how to get tickets and everything else, um, being part of, uh, of, of fan forums, and in everything else, the lay people around me would look at me with envy going, are you, huh? You're going to see the Red Sox on Saturday against the Yankees? How did you pull that off? What did you spend, $600 on StubHub? The answer was always no. I always knew how to get tickets. I always was able to kind of work the system and see what was available to me and, and work it to my advantage. And then what I would do, how did I get in free? Well, what I would do is... Um, I would target one game that summer that I really wanted to go to badly, okay? And say it was the Yankees on a Saturday in July, which was generally the hottest ticket of the entire season. What I would do is I would buy tickets to other games as well as that game, sell them, take the profits, and subsidize my entire trip. So I, I would treat buying these tickets as its own self-sustaining thing, and just saying, look, once a year, my family and I can go down to Fenway, which is typically a very expensive day, and basically have a fun fun day for free. Now, of course, I'm using that money and putting it into silver, but that, that's besides the point. The point is, by being an enthusiast, I was able to pull that off. Well, how does that relate to silver? The point is, there are opportunities all around you within silver. Okay, I don't subscribe to the notion that silver is silver because of the strength of the market that you can sell into and take profits in. Um, just to give you a quick example, okay? Greg Williams is a member of a bullion stacker forum in Australia. Okay? And he's been finding some really good deals on there. People making, you know, putting stuff out there that he knows he can buy, flip, and make a profit on. What is he, pulling a Jedi mind trick on these guys? You know, is he fooling them? Is he conning them? No. He's basically being smart about it, recognizing opportunities, and capitalizing on it. Now, is that available to me? No, it's not. Okay, Big Silver One is always showing you guys videos, uh, recognizing older hallmarks of, of silver, recognizing the silver content in foreign junk silver. Okay, he's showing you that by knowing what you're doing, when you go out and beat the bushes, stuff kind of becomes available, and you can spot it, get a good price on it, and flip it. Now, is that available to me? 
No, not really. Vermont doesn't have the population density to uh, to take advantage of that kind of stuff. Okay, you know, you know, we don't have any pawn shops or anything like that around here. But the point is that is what is available to him, and it may be available to you. I have to use kind of what's available to me. Um, you know, right now, anything that's available right now and is kind of mundane and easy to get, say a Zombux round, two years from now becomes exotic. And there's only one way to get it, the secondary market. Right now, there's some poor schlub in Des Moines, Iowa, watching Glee on his DVR, and he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know what's about to hit him. He doesn't know that he's going to be bitten by the silver bug in two years. He has no clue. And when he does, he's going to discover the Lunar Series, and he's going to want one of these really bad. How's he going to get it? He has to go to the secondary market, and he has to overpay for it. And that's when I'll be waiting with the coins that I bought at today's prices for a good price. So he's going to have to come to me and pay me $60 for this thing. Yeah, that's what I'm predicting. In two years, I think this thing will be selling for $60. Not bad considering that, you know, we, we bought a bunch of them at $39. You've got to be in it to win it. You just have to see what's around you. See what opportunities kind of present themselves to you. And remember, everything that's easy to get today becomes exotic tomorrow. Right now, I'm that poor schlub that has to go around and try to find all these one tenth ounce Lunar Series gold pieces. Do you guys recognize the new one in this lot? I'll give you a minute. Just kidding. There's a new one in there. See if you can spot it. Um, yeah, I'm that schlub. And I was a couple years ago. And now if I want something older, I got to pay up for it. Now, what's available to you? I don't know. I don't know. But you kind of have to keep your head on a swivel and look for opportunities. There's a lot of things out there that people won't bother with. They'll say it's not worth my time. Well, you know what? I don't think about my time that way. I'm not afraid to monetize my time for a lower value because I know where it's going to end up going. You know, when, when you're, uh, yeah, maybe you could say I'm small time, okay. But you know what? I'm not afraid to take advantage of opportunities that others uh, may not think is, uh, is worth it to them. And the end result will be a bigger stack. So, I, you know, just to sum it up, guys, just by being around the silver, just by being around all these offerings that come out every year, by basically taking advantage of it, you're going to do your stack and yourself a lot of good down the road. Um, I, I would at one point like to address, uh, you know, single-minded uh, stacking is what I kind of think of, think of it as, is, is just having one strategy. I, I employ multiple strategies when I'm building my stack. So we'll, we'll be having that discussion at some point. But um, all right, talk to you later. Check out Mr. Silver Bullet Sniper when you get a chance.